Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and of course, welcome back to the Truck Night in America map. Now, in the last video where we had a battle between the 2nd Gen 3500 and the uh, Limes L400, we had a lot of comments that were like, hey, where's the Duramax? Where's the Cat Eye? And I am happy to say that we've brought it out here for its own battle against the 3500. Now, I've tried to set these trucks up similarly. However, we can see that the Cat Eye has much bigger tires than the second gen, and there's really nothing that I can do about that because these are the maximum size tires that I can run on the second gen. These are 40 inch Maxxis Trepidors, and these are Nitto Trail Grapplers, and the size difference, the size difference looks pretty sizable. I mean, these have got to be, these have got to be like coming close to a 50. I mean, if we're comp comparing on the same scale, these have got to be coming close to a 50 if these are a 40. So definitely a little bit of a difference in travel, definitely a little bit of a difference in tire size, and also this thing has these tricky atomic axles that actually curve um, halfway through the axle, whereas this guy has a just a standard solid axle. So advantages and disadvantages on both sides, but I have tried to sort of line up power levels to where they're fairly similar, but we'll see how similar they actually are once we get into the test. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this test and see which one comes out on top. Let me know in the comment section down below uh, which one you'd be driving home. Now, I know the last time we did a truck night battle with the second gen and the L400, a lot of you guys were all about that second gen, but a lot of you guys were also about that L400. So I completely understand if you're, you know, your preference is one way or the other way, but this is kind of one of those comparisons where I also feel like I'd have to have both because I love both of these trucks so much. But without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and kick off this test with a run in the Cat Eye just to kind of refresh our memory of how this thing does here because it's been a while since I've actually driven this thing on truck night. So three, two, one, let's go. Come on. There we go. There we go. Not a bad launch. A little bit of a jump. Throw it in high. See how it does through the mud. Does pretty well until it gets a little bit further through. Gets to about halfway through, and then the front end really does dive down. Doing okay, though. Nice and easy. Whoa. There it is. Come on. I'll put it in high and see if it can jump over the top of the hill. Ooh. Oh, my God. We basically were balancing on the front axle until we just eventually smashed down on the rear. God! I think that's the longest I've ever been able to balance something on a front axle and not have it, like, completely destroy itself. Alright, easy. I don't know why I thought trying to drive over that metal beam was a good idea. But either way, we're gonna go ahead and we're doing this test properly. We're even, you know, we're pulling one of the 1500s. So, that should kind of give a little bit of a comparison in terms of towing. Ooh, high range is sinking there in the mud. But that's also probably because we ran right into the rock. Directly on our diff, too. Like, that's, that's, uh, that's a big oof. Come on. Come on! Not necessarily the best run I've ever had through there, but not bad. Not bad by any means. Alright, diving into the pond. This is a section that gives a lot of trucks trouble. But this guy doesn't really seem to have all that many issues with it, really. It seems to be very reliable and very, um, very consistent. As long as you make sure that the diff doesn't get hung up on a rock or two, you're fine. Now, this section, it's going to love. You just have to approach it with a little bit of extra care and flex your way on through. These atomic axles really put in that work on the rocks. Come on, and I'm sure that these tires... The fact that they're just that much taller than the tires on the second gen are also really helping. All right, let's throw it back into automatic mode. Kick the clutch a couple times, and let's get it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. Ah, the transmission sometimes gets a little confused on this map. I have a feeling that the transmission programming was designed for just a different scenario. Okay, let's not go off that edge. I pushed a rock all the way to the bridge. Are you kidding me? Bro. That rock must have been along for the ride for quite some time. Oh, come on! Dude, I was hoping that if we bumped it in high, it would kind of catapult me over all of the logs. No such luck. Didn't really end up going down that way. All right, let's see how you do through the whoops. Pretty well, especially for a solid axle rig. I mean, solid axle rigs, while they are great on trails, high speed stuff, they could be a little iffy sometimes, but this one is tuned very, very well. 
And that is the Cat Eyes Run. Not a bad job at all. Not a bad job in the least bit. But now it's time to grab the second gen in a very interesting configuration. These are different wheels than you guys have seen me run on this thing before in a video. And I really dig the like sort of, you know, white uh, paint on the truck and the red paint on the wheels. We've got the diamond cut stacks in the bed. And we're going to go ahead and fire it up. See what she does. Sounds so good. Three, two, one. Let's go. Definitely gets off the line pretty well, although I will say the Cat Eye has one more gear on this thing. This is a 5-speed, whereas the Cat Eye is a 6-speed, so gonna have to be careful there. Oh, made it further than the Cat Eye, though, in the mud before it started to sink, and it didn't really start to sink until it really got to the deep stuff. Bumping it up the concrete block, back into high. Spin it a little bit, trying to get it to really just put that power down and go. Wow, in high, it didn't even really want to jump at all. But, you know what? It stayed in high, and it's very controllable all the way through. God, this thing smokes a lot. I mean, it's a it's a twin-turbo 24 valve, but still. All right, I'm going to ease it on through the mud. I'm going to try and do this rolling. Yep, good, good, good. Go, 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 go. You make it through this secondary mud section in high. I doubt it. We were really getting hung up on that rock there for a second. It was not too happy about that. But these Trepidors are putting in work. They're great tires. I don't know why I don't use them more often. Great tires. Easy does it. Now find the grip of the front axle. Easing your way out. Good, good, good. All right. All the way through. That's towing test complete. Into the pond. The pond, again, th this will always be the equalizer for anything that isn't fast enough to jump over the pond. Now, the L400 with the top engine and the speedy speed boy gearbox will launch itself all the way over the pond. The only problem is, good luck with the landing zone, because it's not very friendly to, like, massive jumps. Alright, so this part we're gonna have to be a little bit careful, but it does okay. The approach angle's a little iffy with this bumper. It's better uh, with the pre-runner bumper. If you want the best approach angle you can get, the pre-runner bumper is gonna be the way to go. But this approach angle isn't bad. I, I do like how this one's got a winch included in it. I always love when people combine like a pre-runner style bumper and a winch. It's not really all that common to see, but like you do sometimes see it, especially in real life. All right, let's take, whoa, all right. Easy there, bud. When that torque comes in, it's pretty, uh, oh God, it's a, it's a bit of a shove. There we go. This bridge can really throw you off if you hit it going too fast. All right, up and over the other end. Oh, high range through the logs is not working out for me very well. Not working out for me very well at all, but, I mean, we still made it. See how it does through the whoops. Actually, this almost does a little bit better through the whoops. That's, again, really good for a solid axle truck. That's awesome. Really, really good, dude. I love it. Now, these two trucks obviously both put in really good performances, and I think... What's really impressive to me is how well the second gen did, even though the Cat Eye is wider and has taller tires and has these, like, you know, tricky atomic axles. I think they both did a very, very, very good job. I, I really do think they both did a very good job. Now, real quick, just like we did in our previous test with the L400 in the second gen, we're going to actually go back to the garage, and then we are going to do just a little bit of a quick trail run in these trucks. The only reason why we're doing that is because I do want to compare them outside of the sort of, you know, traditional Truck Night in America obstacle course setting because you're not always going to be running these trucks on Truck Night. You're not always going to be bombing them through an obstacle course at max speed. You will be in trail riding scenarios and I think it's important that these trucks are able to do both. Now, the Cat Eye, obviously, this is, I mean, it's literally called the Cat Eye Trail Rig, and that's for obvious reasons, because it was designed primarily, or at least this version was, to be able to make its way down a trail very well. I mean, not only make its way down a trail very well, but make its way down a trail with the best of them. I mean, this is going to be right up there with your Jeeps and your built crawlers and your, you know, your Broncos and stuff like that. I mean, look at the flex. Look at the way it just eases its way down the trail. It's actually very much so at home going slowly down a trail. Um, in fact, it's just as at home going slowly down a trail as it is going at high speed through an obstacle course. And I think that's a big, big plus for this truck because not a lot of rigs 
have that sort of dual personality, right? Not a lot of rigs have the ability to handle the high speed stuff as well as the low speed, you know, trail riding, crawly type stuff. I really think it's, it shows a mark of a great rig when they can do both and do both well. I, I think that's a huge deal. And of course, this one's got beans on the dash. Oh, let's see if we can take the tricky line. We could take the obvious line, but I want to take like a weird, like awkward side line. And it manages that. Come on. Come on. What are you, what are you stuck on? Probably the rear axle. Yeah, or the front axle, or both. It could have been hung up on. Oh, man. Slipped off. All right, that line's not for us then. Yeah, that line's not for us. Ease her up and around, and there we go. Now, just to compare, just to compare, we are going to go ahead and ease this guy up the trail just by a, just by a, like a touch. And we're actually parked off of the trail right now, so that's good. We're going to grab the 3500 now. We're going to go ahead and beam our way back to the garage and take a quick trail ride in this thing. Now, if you watched the last video with the L400, you know how this thing does on the trail and you know that its biggest uh, shortcoming in trail scenarios is its wheelbase. I mean, the wheelbase is just so incredibly long that it becomes very prone to high centering. Now, the 40-inch tires really do help that, but they don't, you know, fix it. They're only like a sort of bandage, right? You know, the, the increasing the tire size will help in some areas, but it will really only take you so far. And it does take you a pretty good ways in this truck, especially, you know, if you do run the 40s, but the only thing is, you're always going to remember that you are driving a bus. You, you really are, especially like in trail terms, when you compare this to other things that you'll see out on the trail, even that cat eye, uh, this thing really is a big bus compared to that cat eye. And, and that's not a bad thing. It's just something you have to be aware of when you're driving this thing in trail scenarios. Now, if you know how to apply that wheelbase and apply it well, you can actually use it to your advantage. We've seen that recently on some of the trails on the TNB trails map. Um, this thing is actually able to hold its own on TNB trails very, very well, especially for its size and length. But the only thing with that is the areas where it can hold its own in are also in some time, like in some situations, oh God, I did that very wrong. Uh, but in some situations overshadowed by the areas where it can't really hold its own and the wheelbase gets in the way. The only thing is in a section like this, You'll do fine. The only thing is you're going to come down and like, you know, completely smash your tailgate. But, you know, that's like, and sometimes that's, you know, that's just all part of the game when your truck is this big. But with all that being said, let me know which one you prefer in the comment section down below. I really look forward to hearing your opinions. And with also, also with that, let me know which one you would take home. I'm very curious once again. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave me a like. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments as usual. And also, if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on. And I'll see you guys next time.